Bah exactement, c'est la traduction de la famille 18 heures et on peut voir aussi le côté brutal de la voiture et l'hommage qui est rendu. Je pense que c'est un combo qui, qui affilie les deux. J'adore, j'adore. Honnêtement... Euh... Un, un doré, mais un doré euh, brutal et bestial. Je pense que ça n'a strictement rien à voir comparé à la couleur originelle. Et c'est... c'est original. Vraiment, euh, je pense que là, ça va être euh, vraiment méconnaissable. Tout le monde va le voir, là, sur Monaco. Tu vas pas passer inaperçu. Tu vas pas passer inaperçu. <rire> What is up? It's your favorite 12-year-old in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> Today we are talking about, well, well, we're talking about this. Clearly, this car has been wrapped. Uh, and I want to tell you the story behind it because a lot of you may be wondering what the hell does this mean, first of all, and, 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 and why, why, why have I done this? Because it is quite a wacky wrap. So, story time. I obviously have been making videos on this English channel for a long time. And I started making videos in French on a separate channel, Seb Delaney FR, about, about a year ago. And I have to admit, slightly stupidly, I was making a video on the French channel, which was top five supercars for under 50,000 euros. And at the end of that video, completely, I mean, unpredicted, the guy, Cole, who I was filming, who was helping me film and edit back then, had no idea. I just said, I think we had 30,000 subscribers. I said, if this video gets 20K likes, Um, and 10,000 comments, which is unheard of. Like, we thought it was impossible. Um, I will buy one of these cars. And well, yes, well, clearly, we got the 20K likes and the 10,000 comments in actually like a matter of days, like two, three days. So yeah, that was a little bit of a pickle at the time. I was wondering, what have I gotten myself into? Now, obviously, I'm very happy we did that. But there was a bit of a stress moment. We then embarked on this adventure where we, we drove, test drove all five of the cars. It was a Bentley, an Aston, Maserati, this and a Porsche 997. <laughs> drove all of them and then had um, our subscribers which we call La Famille 18 Heures, which means the six o'clock family, because we post at six o'clock uh, French time uh, every time we post a video. So we called the subscribers of that channel the six o'clock family. Sounds slightly better in French, I will admit. Six o'clock family in English doesn't really sound the best, but it sounds cool in French. We got the subscribers of the French channel to vote, and they ended up voting for the Audi R8 out of all of the cars. And it wasn't like defined that it'd be a V10, a V8, which R8 it would be. So then I, I started looking into V8s, V10s, both fantastic, not too much of a visual difference. Obviously the big difference is the engine, uh, 4.2 liter V8 or 5.2 liter V10. Obviously a price difference, a running cost difference, an insurance price difference. So it was a decision to be made. I ended up deciding that, you know, V8s in some form, whether they're twin turbocharged or, or whatever they may be, they'll be around for a while. Whereas V10s, am I really going to get another opportunity to buy a naturally aspirated mid-engine V10 supercar? Maybe down the line, but that seemed more unlikely and the noise, the extra power, everything, the slight visual differences like the slightly bigger air vents and, and uh, the carbon mirrors that you can get, stuff like that, I, I, I just really liked as well. So I decided on a V10. Then, you know, I started looking into 
right, which one's going to depreciate the least? Because if you manage to have the capital to buy one of these cars, what will end up costing you is how much it depreciates, right? So, so I started looking at, you know, the first gen Artronics manuals. This is the facelift, the brand new uh, uh, version of the R8, the second gen, then the second gen facelift. Those were out of budget. Second gen could have been doable. They're around similar money to, to one of these, slightly more. Um, but I ended up deciding that the manuals were the ones that probably would lose less value. And out of the manuals, the rarest one of them all is the V10 Plus. There's only six in the UK and apparently only like 35 worldwide or something crazy like that. Um, so I kind of had this dream, which was a dream because they're so rare. This is the one I want. It's the rarest R8 out there. I think it's going to be one which will be potentially a future classic down the line. It will hold its value well. It will cost me the least long term. I can put miles on it and hopefully not lose too much. And that's what I wanted to do, or I still want to do with, with this car, is whack some miles on it and really enjoy it. And not be too worried about every time I put miles on, losing you know a ton of money in depreciation. So, started looking for one of these. Possible to find. All of a sudden, one pops up online uh, at an auction, an online auction, um, and I and I just I went to see it and I completely fell in love with it. But thought it would be um, completely out of my price range. You know, people were telling me it would sell for around 80, 85,000 pounds. Um, ended up getting it for 63,000 pounds, 40,000 miles, and thought that was you know a really really good deal. Still very happy with the deal because the car's actually gone up in value since. So. Yeah, really happy with how that all happened. Um, huge thank you to Collecting Cars, which put that all together. And, you know, it was the, it was the R8 from La Familia's Retail, the six o'clock family. It was really, it was for the audience, it was for the subscribers. That's when I announced it on the English channel as well. And it just became this car that represented um, the people who watch these videos, whether it's English or French, the people who have, you know, shown me support over the years and always been there, this car, I really wanted it to be for the audience. So taking it on road trips, taking it to car events, taking whoever I can for a ride in the car and really making it, you know, the audience's car just as much as mine, as much as I possibly could. So it was great at the time. And I thought we need to do something. We need to wrap it. We need to come up with something wacky, which you know represents the channel. And I really want the audience to decide. So we put several options out there, monotone color, um, you know, a, a kind of more wacky rap and uh, we ended up, well I ended up coming up with three ideas which I wanted to kind of put forward to the audience and then ask you guys what do you prefer? Do you prefer idea one, idea two, idea three? Can we, shall we combine them um, or do all of them? So the three ideas were first of all inspiring ourselves from the R8s which took part in the 24-hour Le Mans race um, and the, the wrap and kind of the overriding shape and details that those cars had. So that comes through these lines here, which I continued down below. Uh, it really comes through on the, on the front hood as well, on the roof and around the car. The second idea was having the rust look, because I'd seen a Porsche GT3 RS, I believe, Martini, with the rust look, um, which was really, really cool. So I, I, I really wanted to maybe have that on, on the car at some point. Really enjoyed that. But most importantly, I wanted to include the audience. So I wanted to have photos of subscribers because this car represents the audience. I thought it was only right to have that and I'd seen, I think Yanni did it um, a while ago and a few other people had done it. There was a Fernand GTO around Monaco which I'd spotted back in the day which had it. So I thought um, that would be really cool. Put that to you guys and you voted for all three. So we then cracked on and decided you know, to, to, to put a design together. That's when I partnered up with RDGVA um, and we started designing this wrap together. We went through loads of different versions of it, loads of different ideas. These guys were fantastic in helping the, uh, in the design process. You, it's, it's maybe hard for you to see, but all the details we have like around here, you know, all of that has to be drawn and, and it takes a while. So. Yeah, we, the details I'm, I'm really happy with. Like even the, you know, the 18 here, the details on that, the fact that the gold kind of overlays onto the matte black, really nice. So yeah, I was really happy with this final detail. You know, we decided to go with the photos at the back of the car. So we kind of divided the car into three different, um, three different stages. So the back of the car is photos, the middle of the car, is the hashtag 
La Famille 18 Heures, also being get right here, which is my um, other company. So I figured because this car is going to be taking, uh, you know, be in a lot of videos and have a lot of photos of it taken, might as well put the logo of my other company there. Um, and then the front of the car is very Le Mans based. Uh, more necessary, more than the side, I reckon that's very Le Mans. So it's kind of divided in those three um, sections, and I'm really happy, really happy with how the design came out. Obviously, I would have liked this to be done earlier. It was meant to be done before the lockdown. Uh, we had the designs finished, uh, the, the wrap actually was printed a little while ago, and then lockdown happened. The car was having its service done at RE Performance, but the Andy GVA team couldn't get there. Uh, we couldn't get the, the film there, so it couldn't be done. So for two and a half months, something that the car was, was basically stationary in RE Performance and, and couldn't move, had its service done, but yeah, it was, it was kind of pointless having it, having it up there for a while. So as soon as we could, whacked it on a truck with all of my furniture and stuff from, from the UK, brought it down here to Monaco, and in the end, what happened is we had the silver, um, well, gray, R8, and Scud together. So I thought, let's do that for a couple of weeks, make the most of having the matching cars. We made a video with them, we took photos with them, and then RDGVA came down, and we needed a spot. So really, really kindly, Stars Monte Carlo, uh, which is run by my friend Johnny, who was so, so kind, opened up his dealership to us and allowed us to uh, use his dealership to be able to perform a live wrapping of the R8. So as I mentioned a bunch of times, this car is for the audience. So I thought, how can we involve the audience as much as possible? We wrapped it in a dealership in central Monaco uh, and opened the doors up and posted all over Instagram and a bunch of subscribers came over and were able to see the car being wrapped live and actually take parts of the unused bits of the wrap back home. And that was awesome because you know, I was hanging out there most of the day and being able to, to just chat, sit down and, and really kind of get to know some of the people that came by was unbelievable. You know, the whole story behind this, the fact that it was a, the car was decided by the audience, um, the wrap was designed basically by the audience um, and then you guys were able to come and see it being uh, put on the car live. Uh, it was just awesome. And, and seeing how far the ideas come uh, to where we are today is fantastic. It's not quite finished yet. There's still details we want to do. I mean, I was super nervous when we first started the wrap because it was, it's quite daring, right? It's one thing seeing it as a render. When I saw the film at first and started seeing all the details on it, that kind of really comforted me. And then the first piece they put on was actually the hood, which is the biggest, the hardest piece, because it's all one piece, the front hood on this car. All of a sudden I felt quite a lot better because I really liked the way it kind of matched the design, the aggressive front of the, uh, of the R8 and kind of brought that out. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. So yeah, then bit by bit it was coming together. I was spending my time with uh, subscribers that were coming by, but also obviously with the guys at RD, GVA, Stars Monte Carlo, Johnny, everyone, and it was coming together and it felt like a team effort and uh, really, really, really was. Um, so it was awesome to see it all coming together. Uh, there's also a little clip I want to share with you with Artem from RD, GVA, which we filmed literally just as we took, as we finished the car, um, which he had a few nice things to say, which I thought I'd share with you. Right guys, just a quick little thank you also because the team that were behind this were awesome. So this is Artem from RDGVA, uh, who also, we just wanted to say that they are going to be giving a discount code to anyone who contacts and says they watched this video. So thank you so much for offering this for, for my audience. Uh, so minus 15% on any wrap that you guys do through you guys. You helped design, where well, you designed this with me. We then you put the wrap on. You did it all in what, a day and a half? Yeah, yeah we could have done it faster. Yeah, but usually we do like a car in, in like 12 hours. But... Which is crazy and when you see it in real life and you guys are looking for your photos you'll see the quality on this so uh, no it's been it's been an awesome awesome time thank you so much for working on this project with me because I, I arrived and I had like all these kind of crazy ideas I was like I want a Le Mans wrap Russ look photos on the back and I know for you you were kind of like oh okay but you you brought it together I'm super happy with the way it looks definitely not gonna cross another car with this so guys the Instagram is gonna be here discount code, contact them, say you came from this video and uh, just a massive thank you to you. Thanks Sam, thank you for everything.
stay tuned because we're going to still be working on the Ferrari tomorrow. Oh, yes. Ferrari. Yeah. We're be doing full front PPF. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and we're doing rear lights on that. Oh, this is also, it's not quite finished. There's still lights. Um, and eventually we're going to do the wheels because I can already see the comments arriving. Get black wheels, get black wheels. Yes, we're going to do that. So huge thanks to Artem. Really nice to have a discount code. So thank you so much. Uh, we're back now in the garage. Literally, this the car was finished, what, like, three hours ago. We took it quickly to film the intro so that we can post this video. You're seeing it, I mean, like not less than 24 hours after we filmed this. So yeah, I mean, there's obviously, as I mentioned, the wheels are gonna change. We're gonna tint a few things like the lights, the windows. So there's still details that need to, to happen. But uh, overall, that's the story behind this wrap. Because if you don't know the story, yeah, it looks really wacky and it just looks like I kind of, yeah, went a bit nuts when designing this. But there is a story behind it, there is a purpose behind it. And, um, you know, it kind of represents, I, I think, the channels really well, the French channel, the English channel, and what we try to achieve on this. Uh, on this. And, you know, being able to bring out our creativity, our imagination, um, having all the subscribers on the back. It's kind of cool this because uh, I think we had, yeah, I mean, like, thousands and thousands of people who sent the photos in. We put as many as we could so that you could still see the photos, but if you ever see this car in real life, look for your photo because it may be somewhere on the back of this car. And it's just gonna be something that, you know, I'm gonna try and, when I'm not using it, park out in Monaco when I'm here. Whenever I travel, I just wanna park it outside so that people can see it, take photos with it, um, and it can be shared with everyone. Take it to events, take as many people as possible for rides. And yeah, I just want to say, you know, like a huge thank you obviously to everyone who was involved in this. Johnny, Stars, everyone who's filming now, RDGVA. Um, it's been an awesome, awesome adventure, but mainly I just want to say, obviously, a huge, huge, huge thank you to you watching this video. If you're subscribed to the channel, uh, if you leave a thumbs up on the videos, all those things really do help. And this was kind of my way, I guess, to say thank you for everything um, and, and that you've done for me over the years and all the support you've shown. So this car represents that. This is our car. Um, I love it, I love what it stands for, and I really look forward to taking it on adventures and bringing you guys alongside for those adventures. So thank you so much. I hope this video kind of encapsulates everything and what this wrap represents, why it's on the car. Let me know what you think of it, um, and we'll go from there. But I'm sure it's gonna divide opinions, but uh, I think the story behind it kind of justifies the slightly wacky look. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I'll be seeing you again very, very soon for plenty more videos with this car, with the Scuderia, which as Artem said, is also getting a PPF and a few little details done on that. And yeah, thank you as always, guys. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers and bye-bye.